Hello everybody and welcome back to Solaris. Um, in the last episode, we were prepping a massive armada in defense of our um, home territory against the Unbidden. And then the Andaran Archivists just decided that they were... They had enough. And they just completely destroyed the Unbidden on their own. Um, if I go to the situation log... We can look at the uh, the situation. Apparently, the Unbidden still have four dimensional anchors active, and we cannot attack the portal until we destroy all four of these dimensional anchors. Where these anchors are, I don't know. In my eyes, I can only see two systems that the Unbidden still controls. Gargantua and whatever this Trinity star is. Um, I don't know how they can fit four dimensional anchors in those two systems, but those two systems are f too far away for us to really deal with. Um, now, as far as I understand, that means that this portal cannot be attacked. Well, it says so there in red. And it means that this portal is probably still active, which means they can probably still send reinforcements through there. So, while the Andaran Archivists might have pretty much solved the issue for us, until we can attack that portal, we probably need to have a few Starfleets um, over there, and ready to respond. So I'm going to go ahead and send two Starfleets into the Deprey system. We're just going to sit there, and if anything dares to come out of that portal, we're going to be ready for them. I'm going to actually send my last Starfleet, the... Let's see. I think it's the Decini Starfleet. I'm going to send this back to the Elk Cluster. We still have some... Uh, we still have some threats to deal with in the Elk Cluster. And uh, if I have two Starfleets over here, I think we'll, that'll be more than enough to deal with the, the threat. Um, okay, as far as looking to our planets, um, I think we're doing good as far as jobs and, and whatnot goes. Though actually, I see negative amenities on some planets. So here, we might consider building another Hollow Theaters. Um, I think we need to build energy grids on all our planets as well, if I have the spare building slots for it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that here. I'm going to replace this research labs with... Embassy con complex is interesting. Planet limit 1. This gives us available envoys. Plus 1. Might be worth building some of these on our capital. I think I'm going to build one of these. I'm going to build an embassy complex. This can help me increase my envoys, which is going to help me increase loyalty among all my vassal states. I think I need an envoy, you know, stationed full time in each of my vassals to ensure their loyalty and, and happiness and their needs are attended to. Um, let's see, we look at our other worlds. Yeah, I could probably do with an energy grid on this world as well. Droid Tendir is currently building uh, energy districts and generator, uh, sorry, generator districts. We're going to go ahead and accompany that with an energy grid. Forfion, we don't have any spare, uh, spare building slots. We can use a spare building slot on this world to create an energy grid. Portalia, I don't want to mess with this. I think we have a good, good system going here. Gruner Prime, we could always add an energy grid. Uh, New Favaria, I think we're going to replace one of our research labs with an energy grid. So I think what's costing us so much more energy is upgrading our fleets. I think the more advanced weapons we put on here... Oh, we already have an energy grid. The more advanced weapons we put on our, on our fleets, uh, the more energy upkeep it's going to cost. I mean, that, and that makes perfect sense. Ultan. Okay, we're already building an energy grid. Perfect. Okay, so now that we've attended to all of our planets, I'm going to go ahead and unpause the game. So two of our fleets should be moving down to the Depre system. Okay, they're concerned that my research storage is full for influence. There's not much I can do about that. And uh, I'm going to run out of energy credits in 11 months. Hmm. Why don't I go into society management? Crisis. Oh, I don't have that option. Uh, government edicts. And uh, I don't think we're actually short on alloys as much right now as 
Do they have an option for subsidies for energy? Like generator subsidies? Farming subsidies. What does fleet supremacy do? Ship build speed, ship starting experience, diplomatic weight from fleet power. Eh, that's not that good. Nutritional plentitude. Mm. Network amenities. That could be good, but I'm really looking for something. Crystalline sensors, nanite actuators. Something that will increase our energy, and I don't actually think we have one. Unless I'm just like completely missing it. In that case, I think I'm going to go back to taking research subsidies. I think one of the things that the Andaran archivist messed with is co completely reducing our research output. Yeah, if we go to technology, let's see how long all this stuff is going to take me. Yeah, a long time. We have a hostile fleet engaged. Oh, in the system. Do we want to see our new fleets, um, our new fleets in action? All right, let's go ahead. Well, that took us no time at all. That wasn't actually very exciting to watch. Okay, we're just gonna continue on our way down into the Depre system, which can can this portal be attacked? I think it can. They sent another 120,000 uh, fleet through the portal, so hopefully we're gonna be able to catch them in time. 120,000 is not no laughing matter. Um, back in the L cluster, um, our fleets are doing fine actually. I wanted to see if there's any fleets that we can and should be upgrading. Uh, this one looks like a good candidate, so I'm going to go ahead and click the reinforce fleet here. Um, is it minor artifacts that we're running out of this time? No, it's alloys. Okay, seems like we're kind of riding a good balance between alloys and uh, minor artifacts now then. I'd rather have alloys be the limiting factor. Hostile okay, station. so we're going to go ahead and attack the 102,000 fleet. And we're going to actually observe some combat with the extra dimensional invaders. And we're going to see how they fight. And if there's any more tailoring we can do to our fleets to make them better prepared. I think slowest is a little too slow. It's kind of hard to tell what they're attacking us with. It seems like a lot of electricity. Okay, I'm not really gleaming much from this. I see a lot of like lightning bolts and I can't tell if those are ours or theirs. But it looks like this this fleet combat is going to be a complete success for us. Shroudwalker Enclave destroyed. The destruction of the Shroudwalkers in the Hualinga system. The aggressors made short work of the campaign, reducing the Shroudwalkers facilities to rubble. It is strange to think that these mystics could not foresee their own demise, or could this tragedy be a part of the same still grander design. Who can say? Without their services, the future remains shrouded. That is a sh that is a shame, but it is what it is. Promising officer, Captain Vaki Bathan, commanding officer of the ISS Yamag Yamagro 2, served with distinction during the recent engagement that took place in the Depre system. Yeah, with that stunning success we just had, I'm not surprised he did. The Admiralty on Favaria, recognizing these qualities of a promising flag officer, has decided to promote the captain to the rank of full commander. Alright, we have a new commander, and it looks like we're attacking the portal. Does the portal fight back? Maybe a little bit. I don't, I don't even think it does, though. Is this going to be the end of them straight away? Dimensional portal destroyed. The dimensional portal on the Depre system has been destroyed. This means that the extra dimensional invaders can no longer receive reinforcements from their twisted realm. With the destruction of this portal, the end of the invasions is finally in sight. A profound sense of elation has settled over most of the galaxy. The Sander and United Planet States has won, uh, has won much ad admiration. The Sander and United Planet States has won much admiration? Excuse me? Since it was their ships that struck the final blow against the portal, the crews of those vessels will be celebrated as heroes for generations to come. Excuse me, they were in our armada. We led the attack. 
I cannot believe they're getting credit for it. But also, it was not really a big, impressive feat of valor or anything. It was actually kind of disappointing. I can't believe we spent the whole game getting ready for this. Just to have that be the entire endgame crisis. Hmm. Okay, so here's what I'm going to tell you guys. Um, let me know in the comments what you would like me to do with this series. I think that due to maybe a bug in the game, or maybe it wasn't a bug, maybe it was just a rare set of circumstances, the endgame crisis really wasn't a crisis for us. Um, and it's not due to our um, over-preparedness. I think it's just due to the game awakening this ridiculously powerful Andaran regulators. Um, so let me know what you guys want me to do with the series. Um, if you guys are tired of Stellaris, um, we can go ahead and end the series. Um, if you guys would like me to establish a new focus, we can totally do that. Um, we can set a new focus as our winning conditions. Because I don't feel like... I originally set out to beat the Endgame Crisis, and technically we just did that. But it doesn't feel like victory. First, because it wasn't difficult to do. We did it in this course of two episodes. And two, because the Sandrine United Planet States got the credit for it, even though, really, our fleet was leading the battle. Um, so, I think our options are kind of limited, but we could try to secure the L Cluster, and maybe we could even try to get to a point where we could attack and conquer the Andarian Regulators. I can't come up with a good role-playing reason to do this, other than that they pose a threat to us because they're so much more technologically advanced and powerful. But technically, they did kind of just save the galaxy, so I don't know how I could justify an attack against them. In any case, uh, let me know where you guys want me to take this series. If you guys are truly feeling like this series is over, um, I'm happy to call it there. There's plenty of other fun games we can play, and I'm sure I will do more Stellaris playthroughs in the future, where hopefully the endgame crisis will be more threatening. Um, another idea just popped into my mind also. I could probably go into console commands and look up a way to spawn a new crisis in. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do that. Um, I just have to look it up. And uh, if I can spawn a new crisis in, maybe we can have round two and try to beat the crisis a second time. Uh, maybe we'll choose a different one besides the unbidden. But anyways, just let me know, okay? I'll be I'll be monitoring the comments, and uh, I'll be sure to um, be sure to steer this this series in a direction that you guys are going to be happy with. Uh, in the meantime, I think we're going to turn our attention to the L cluster. Um, I'm going to move our fleets back into the L cluster, and. Um, I'm tired of our allies taking credit for our victories, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on um, Discourage allied fleets from following us because I, I don't want our allies following us anymore. We can handle this ourselves. Alright, now in this citadel we should probably build some defenses. Um, like an ancient rampart, two gun batteries, two hangar batteries, uh, two hangar bays, and Maybe even a torpedo battery. Once I have all four fleets, I think we can go ahead and claim the Baskell system for ourselves. And um, we might even think about moving into Gen. That's a big maybe though. No shipyard available to build fleet. Complete. What do you mean, no shipyard available to build fleet? Don't we have a shipyard that can build titans for us? What's happening at Regunoth? Hmm. Construction complete. Maybe this this shipyard queue needs to be completely empty in order to build a titan. Our empire can support only support two titan-sized ships. Oh, so there's a titan limit. I did not even realize this. So not all of our fleets get to have a titan. Okay, that's good to know. Um, official Vak Baskorak can get a level up, and we're gonna go ahead and give him Fertility Preacher, sure. He's gonna tell our, our populations to start getting busy. We need more population in the Empire. <laughs> well, I'm still, I'm still upset about what happened in the Depre system. 
I can't believe we didn't get credit for this. Ugh. Okay, let's turn off cloaking. And let's move into the debris system and let's see if we can research uh, the debris from that system. Is the unbidden still going? I guess they're still over here in this system and nobody's dealing with them, but they're not our problem anymore. They can't receive any reinforcements through the portal. That's for sure. All right. Well, why don't we go ahead and move our fleets into the Baskell system? See what uh, what damage we can wreak in this system. There should only be one hostile fleet here. I could probably turn off from slow. Hostile fleet engaged. Okay, they don't stand a chance. I actually think we finally cracked, we finally tipped the scales to the point where our our combats against the um, the Grey Tempest are no longer really causing us any significant casualties. Yeah, I think we finally tipped the tipped the balance of power. Um, I need to go ahead and send a construction ship to claim Baskel. I should have had that construction ship ready. I'm hoping that. Our allies' construction ships will not beat us to the beat us to it. Um, we need to go ahead and make sure we're repairing. All right. Looks like we are almost out of energy credits, and I'm glad I caught this before it's too late. Let's. We need to sell a bunch of. Um, consumer goods, sell a bunch of food, sell a bunch of minerals so we can get our energy credits back up and going. Um, we still are running a deficit. Not sure how best to combat this considering all the efforts we've already taken to increase the number of energy districts we have. Um, I think I need to go to my factory worlds like Ultan and just continue building more energy districts, replacing our, our factories with uh, generators because we are producing so many consumer goods we don't even know what to do with them all we should really just be diverting all this productivity towards energy if we can uh, new favaria we can build more energy districts let's do it more mo more jobs always uh, I like having my mineral income so I'm not gonna reduce that I don't think we have enough food to justify reducing our uh, reducing our agriculture districts too much, so I think we're going to leave it like that. Um, this world we have extra districts for some reason. Let's spend them on two more uh, generator districts, and then we can go ahead and upgrade our energy grid as well. I don't think we're going to be able to claim the Baskell system. Alien megastructure, the Bruven Hive have taken the challenge of building on a, uh, of building a science nexus. All right. Well, good for them. Can we build a megastructure? I can't remember. Did we actually research that yet? No, we're still in the process of researching mega engineering. Not that it's really going to matter. I really don't feel like conquering a huge galaxy. Um, if this, if the galaxy size was small, I would consider like maybe, maybe an alternative version of like our end goal could just be conquering the galaxy. But I don't think that's in the cards for us with this size galaxy, and I don't think it's in in feeling with the role play that we have going. Um, we're a republic, and we started out pretty isolationist. And then we moved towards more selfish goals of kind of neutralizing our neighbors, which were threats and hated us. And we, we vassalized them and uh, installed, you know, friendly governments in, in those states. Okay, we didn't even get to claim this system. But the Favarian Republic would definitely not go out and seek to conquer the entire galaxy. Spaceport under attack. And I don't know if we're going to be years off from being able to stand up to the Andarian regulators. So if I go here, it says they have overwhelming technology compared to us still. 
even though we have pretty high technology. Um, and their fleet power is superior to us, so we, we dare not attack them. Not today. All right, we've defeated the debt collectors. All right, we have all, f all four uh, star fleets plus our, our extra cruisers. Um, we have all the titans that we can build. We have our two titans. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into our fleet management. I'm gonna take a titan out of our two fleets that don't already have titans. Is the Riven? No. Cordana has a titan. Okay. So Dessini and Martano will not have any titans. And I think we're gonna replace those titans with... Could probably get 16 torpedo cruisers. And... Uh, We can probably get some more battleships, but actually I don't even think we need to. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go with 16. 208 command limit, I think that's gonna be fine for us. Um, so if I go to these fleets, I can hopefully spend some al Oh no, we're out of alloys. Okay, let's see it. We have five star fleets to move in. Let's see what kind of damage we can wreak in the gen system. And let's make sure this time our construction ships are ready to go. Um, actually, before we move this, we're really being stupid. We should go ahead and set to take point so that our allies will follow us into the system. Alright. Allies, come here. Debris analyzed. We're preparing to move into the gen system. We need you to follow us and back us up. Okay, our allies should be on their way to support us. Okay, great. Looks like we're in for a new commissary general. He's going to get voted out of office and replaced by Vak Baskorak. Interesting. Let me make sure I have commanders for all of our fleets. We do. We should be ready to go. Our allies are in tow. Their fleets are relatively small, but, you know, we'll take what we Debris can get. Analyzed. Debris analyzed. So let's see what this debris is actually doing for us. Extra dimensional weaponry. Advanced real reactor boosters. Ooh, I wonder what extra dimensional weaponry gets us access to. What technolo what technological secrets do the ex do the unbidden have? Okay. Um We have few star fleets to follow us into the gen system. I think we're just going to go for it. We're going to bite the bullet and do it. We're going to turn down to normal speed. We're going to turn down to slow speed and, and watch this combat as it unfolds. Okay. We might not actually win this battle. We have to constantly monitor the situation. This might just completely destroy our fleets that we had so spent so long to build up. But it seems like... Seems like we're at least causing casualties, and I don't know if they can recover from these casualties. I think the fleets that are just stationed and parked in the solar system don't get replenished and repaired over time. I think we're just going to be able to pull this off. I think we're going to be able to do it. Fleet destroyed. Which one of our fleets was destroyed? An entire fleet got destroyed? Oh my gosh, guys. This is going to be a, a high cost. But I think we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, we're just about... We're going to pull this off. I don't know if it was worth the high casualties. But at least this is the L cluster secured. We don't have to worry about any more Grey Tempest fleets. Tempest spent. Our forces have succeeded in destroying the main facility on the Grey Tempest. With the neutralization of its subspace transmitter, all existing Tempest nanomachines have been rendered inert. 
Unable to maintain their cohesion, their ships have dissolved into nothingness. Any planets that were covered by the Tempest Grey Goo are now home to enormous swirling dust storms, consisting of nothing but disabled nanites. With time and resources, these worlds could possibly made, be made habitable once more. Alright, so we have the access to colonize more planets if we want. I, I don't think we need more planets, to be honest. I think that's just getting greedy. Let's go ahead and move our construction ships in here, and let's actually build a starbase. Alright, so let's see what da what's the damage. Okay. Did we lose any t any of our titans? No, okay. Uh, both of our titans survived. We lost... Seven battleships. We lost, let's see, five... Thirteen... Sixteen cruisers. That's a lot of cruisers to lose. That's gonna be expensive. And a whole bunch of destroyers. Um, and I think our... I think our all corvettes, our, our, our corvette fleet just got completely obliterated. That's fine. And there we go. Our cluster is no more. There are supposedly nanite planets that can be terraformed. Ah, but we have not- we just avoided researching the terraforming technology in the first place, so they're still not- not accessible to us. That's fine. If I go into Expansion Planner, I'm just curious. How many of these nanite worlds do we have in our- in our borders? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve new potentially habitable worlds. It's just unnecessary. We don't need twelve more worlds. We really don't. Let's go ahead and send all of our fleets to repair. I don't know if it's going to be in the cards for us to attack the Indarian Regulators. How much more powerful are they than us? Spaceborne life. I don't even see their fleet. Shouldn't we be able to see their fleet? It's somewhere, and I don't- I definitely don't want to run into it. They have a vengeful colossus. Rising unemployment on Ultan. Unemployment and poverty are spreading at an alarming rate on Ultan. That's not good. This uh, sorry state of affairs is being exploited by local crime organizations who find themselves awash with both uh, easy marks and desperate recruits. As a temporary solution, we could increase the unemployment benefits on this planet. Yes. Yes, we're going to un increase unemployment benefits. Um, hopefully that will get us a grapple on the crime situation. Let's go over to Old Town and see what the situation is. We have four unemployed pops. Uh, well, we have eight available jobs. We just need these guys to give up their specialist ways and accept a lower paying job at the generator. I think that's that's the issue. These pops can migrate to other planets so they can downgrade. I think it'll, it's just a matter of time. Crime is still at 0%, so I'm not too concerned. Construction complete. All right. Our fleets have been fully repaired, and now that we don't need them in the L cluster, um, not sure what to do. We could build mining stations and research stations. Our other construction ship can go ahead and build a mining station there. I think if we wanted to attack the Andarian regulators, that would extend the series probably about five to ten episodes as we try to get technologically caught up to them. The Unbidden are back. Really? How did the Unbidden get back here? And can the Sander and United Planet States just deal with this issue on their own? Okay, we need to set our fleets to discourage allied fleets from following so that 
the Sandor and United Planet States can go back to their their empire and defend their borders from the unbidden that remain. Complete. Leader level up. All right. Our commander of the Decini Starfleet needs a level up, and let's go ahead and specialize him in strike craft. Sure. Available council agenda. All right, let's see what we can take. I'm probably going to go with favored society for the extra specialist pop resource output. Okay, we're back into the positive, net positive for energy, which is great. Um, I think we're going to end the episode early this time. Um, I want to wait for you guys to give me some direction of where to go next. So I will be sure to be checking the comments frequently over the coming week. And uh, you guys just let me know what you want to see this, this, uh, this series uh, lead to. I'm kind of favoring the option, if it's possible, to see if I can spawn in another endgame crisis using the, the console commands. Um, and if that's the case, if you guys agree with, that, with me that that might be the best direction to take this series, let me know which crisis you would like me to spawn in. Which one do you think is going to be the most exciting for us to deal with? Uh, in any case, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.